Good morning. Hello and welcome everyone. In today's world where digital ecosystems are expanding faster than ever, security can no longer be a afterthought. It must be engineered, built in, not bolted on. I am thrilled to invite you to a comprehensive 12 part video series on security architecture and engineering, a foundational and advanced exploration that bridges theory, practice and governance. Whether you are a student beginning your journey or a cyber security practitioner refining your craft or a compliance professional aligning systems to regulatory mandate, this series has been thoughtfully created for you. In phase one, we set the groundwork with core concepts. We unpack security models like Bella Podala, Biba, Clark Wilson. We understand system architecture and its principles, including the trusted computing base and the reference monitors. We'll explore preventive, detective and corrective controls. Evaluate systems through common criteria, TCSEC and ITSEC and dwell into cryptographic design and secure system components like hardware, firmware and softwares. That's phase one. In phase two, we move into deep technical exploration. Here, we explore security design principles like defense in depth, least privilege and fail secure. You learn about enterprise architecture frameworks such as SAPSA, TOGAF and Zachman. We'll also cover secure coding, SDLC security integration, engineering focused vulnerability management and dwell into architecture for embedded systems, IoT, mobile, cloud native platforms and containerization. You will gain insights into hardware based securities like TPMs, HSMs, secure boots and trust zones as well as emerging domains like zero trust architecture, confidential computing and the impact of AI ML on architecture. In phase three, we'll turn the spotlight to real world relevance through threat model modeling methodologies like Stride, Dread and Pasta. We will analyze actual breaches, what went wrong and what could have gone right. These case studies will contrast vulnerable versus resilient architectures, giving you blueprints for building secure enterprise patterns while avoiding anti-patterns that exposes organizations to risks. Finally, in phase four, we will converge technology with governance. We will explore how to map architectural design to standards like ISO 27001, Annex A, NIST SP 800-160 and others. We learn how to perform architecture level risk assessments and how to design systems that are not only secure, but compliant with global regulations like GDPR, India's DPDP Act, HIPAA and PCI DSS. Each episode is crafted with clarity and depth, backed by real world examples, theoretical models and regulatory insights. My goal is to demystify complex security concepts empower you to design defensible systems and help you think like a security architect. So if you are passionate about building systems that are secure by design, resilient by architecture and governed by compliance, this series 
is for you. Please subscribe, follow along and join me in this transformative journey into security architecture and engineering. Let's build a safer digital world, one secure design at a time. This is your host, Savit Vithal Salian. Namaskar. Security Architecture and Engineering Part 11 Hardware Security and Emerging Technologies In this we will look at Hardware Security model, Modules HSMs Trusted Platform Modules TPMs Secure Enclaves and Confidential Computing which is SGX AMD self AI and Machine Learning in Security Architecture Hardware Security Model or HSM is a physical computing device that safeguards and manages digital keys performs encryption and decryption and ensures tamper resistant protection for cryptographic operations. It is widely used in environment that require high assurance such as banking, government and cloud computing. HSMs are physical devices that manage and protect digital encryption keys. They perform sensitive operations like encryption, decryption and key generations. And HSMs are designed to be tamper resistant and are often used in financial services, certificate authorities and large enterprises. Example, a fintech company launches a digital payment gateway and wants to ensure that encryption keys used for trans transactions are stored and used securely. To achieve these, they integrate an on-premises HSM into their backend system. All cryptographic keys used for signing, decrypting payments, data and token generation are generated inside the HSM. These keys never leave the HSM in plain text and only authorized applications with strong authentication can interact with HSM benefit, they reduce the risk of key theft. They support compliance with PCI DSS which mandates strong key protection. And they provide audit logs and FIPS and 142-2-113 certificate assurance, certified assurance. Real world example, a multinational enterprise moves to the cloud and uses AWS Cloud HSM to manage its cryptographic workloads securely. The highlight of implementation is customer's master key for encryption, encrypted data in Amazon S3, RDS and E3 are stored in Cloud HSM. The Cloud HSM integrates with AWS key management system to handle encryption, decryption operation while keeping keys in hardware. The HSM cluster is deployed in a virtual private cloud to restrict Access. Access is controlled through IAM policy and dedicated PKI certificate. Outcome, they achieve data encryption at rest and also in transit. They meet the compliance requirement of GDPR, HIPAA, PCI DSS and in addition gains full control over encryption keys with visibility into key usage and rotation. Key functions of HSM, well, key generation, key storage, cryptographic operations, tamper resistance and compliance support. Let's look at trusted platform modules. Trusted platform module is a dedicated microchip or a hardware based security component 
embedded in many modern devices. It provides a hardware root of trust, supporting operations such as secure key generation and storage, platform integrity checks, device identity and authentication, disk encryption and secure boot. PPMs are small chips on a computer's motherboard that stores cryptographic keys securely. They help with tasks like secure boot, disk encryption and platform integrity checks. TPMs provide a strong foundation for device trust. Example, the BitLocker that secures your laptop. A company issues laptop to employee and enables BitLocker drive encryption on Windows. The TPM chip on each laptop secures Securely stores the encryption keys. At boot time, secure boot verifies system's integrity. If the hardware or boot files have been tampered with, the TPM prevents the system from automatically decrypting the drives. Benefit, it provides protection against offline attacks. No user input needed for decryption in a healthy system. It provides a strong assurance even if the attacker has physical access. Real world example, well Microsoft Windows and TPM2 requirements, Microsoft requires TPM2.0 with Windows 11 installation. Why? Well, TPM is used to enforce secure boot, protect biometric credentials. It provides measured boot by storing and reporting boot time values that proves the system hasn't been tampered with. It helps establish device identity in enterprise environment and attest trustworthiness before granting access to network or services. The outcome, enhanced endpoint security, foundation for zero trust access model, stronger defense against firmware and bootloader malwares. Key use cases, well, Disk encryption, well, it stores keys for tools like BitLocker or Lux. From a secure boot perspective, it verifies system integrity during startup. From credential protection perspective, it protects biometrics and password derived credentials. From a digital signing perspective, it securely signs documents or system codes. From remote attestation perspective, it proves system integrity to remove to remote systems. Secure enclaves and confidential computing. The, well, these technologies create isolated environment inside a computer's processor where data can be processed securely even from the operating system. Example include Intel SGX or Software Guard Extension and AMD CEPH Secure Encrypted Virtualization. Confidential computing help protect sensitive information during use, not just at rest or in transit. That's during use. But confidential computing is a security model that protects data in use. That is, while it has been processed in memory by executing code in trusted execution environment or TEEs, such as secure enclaves. These enclaves are isolated region of the memory that prevents unauthorized access even from privileged users or the host operating system. The popular technologies include Intel SGX, AMD Ceph, ARM Trust Zone, Azure Confidential Computing and AWS Nitro enclaves. Example, a research institute wants to analyze sensitive patients' health data hosted in public cloud without violating laws like HIPAA or GDPR. The solution, they use confidential computing environment with Intel SGX based secure enclaves. The data is encrypted in transit and at rest and is decrypted only inside the enclave during the computation. 
even the cloud provider cannot view the data or the processing logic. The result, the institute runs AI model on confidential data without exposing it, thus ensuring compliance and preserving patients' privacy. Real world example, well, Microsoft Azure's confidential VMs support confidential computing using AMD Ceph or Intel TDX. Use case, financial services. A bank uses Azure's confidential computing to run fraud detection model on live transaction data and keeps the algorithm proprietary and the data secure even from Azure's administrator and achieve compliance with data protection laws. The feature use, used encrypted memory and CPU state, remote attestation to verify the enclave is secure before computing, and compatibility with Kubernetes and Azure services. The outcome, the bank achieves end-to-end -end data confidentiality while leveraging cloud scalability. The benefits of secure enclaves and confidential comp computing? Well, data in use protection is the first, wherein it prevents data leaks during processing. It isolates the host OS. It seals sensitive operation from the system administrators also. Provides remote attestation, that is, proofs enclaves integrity to remote users. Ensures regularly compliance, just enabling sensitive workload in regulated environment and protects proprietary algorithms or code. I hope this helped. We have now come to the end of part 11. We will now move to part 12. Thanking you for the time that you have invested in this. If you, have, if you liked it, if you think this has brought value to your table, do subscribe, like, do comment for any points that you think is requiring attention. Do share with your colleagues who you think can benefit from these video series. For now, I'll take your leave. This is your host, Savit Vittal Salian. See you in part 12. Namaskar.